hello, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm, um, Lola is always very generous in her comments about me. However, I'm just an interpreter, a translator, and colleague of uh, a lot of the interpreters who've just logged in. And I'm just going to share some of my thoughts with you um, for this presentation. Uh, so it is about remote interpretation, and I'm just going to basically touch about um, the remote interpretation uh, in the areas of the initial stage, then planning for the future, handling clients and challenges, and then go to some of the advantages that we can draw from the uh, whole situation that we are facing with. Um, so initial stage. Uh, clearly, every, everyone uh, who's like me, who's been interpreting almost full time um, on a day to day basis, uh, find themselves out of a job. And uh, it is um, a bit of a shock. So my recommendation is not to panic. First of all, um, I don't. I'm, I know that we have um, people who are joining in in this webinar from all over the world. However, I think in most of the countries, governments are trying to help out and make sure that people have enough to go by. And if we consider that during our lifetime that we put a little bit on the side for a rainy day, I think we could consider these uh, those rainy days days if not fully drills but we can really um, check in to see what we can do for the time being and at the end of the day our health is takes the first priority so we got to be healthy so my recommendation is to not to panic take it easy and uh, I can assure you that the work is there out there for you and we just have to wait out the initial stage a little bit and be patient not to pick and um, at the same time think about getting um, to start thinking how i can be active during this time and looking into the future so let's look at the future interpretation and um, we have to be really realistic i think during these times um, all of us who've done who, who are interpreters we have done remote interpretation before. I, I think nine percent of us we've done phone interpretation, interpretation by way of video, and it was always in the air. So it's nothing um, new that the remote interpretation was always there. It's just that all of a sudden we think that oh my goodness, it's really, really right here at our doorsteps. So it's something that it could be temporary. But it could, we could also look at it and say, well, maybe not so much temporary, but in sort of semi-temporary or more permanent in the future. So at this time, I think my advice is that let's get um, equipped for what remote interpretation is going to need from us. Let's uh, think that um, we have to make sure that we have our equipments ready, the phone, and um, if we are doing phone interpretation or video interpretation, our computer is set, our connections are done, uh, we have like the headphones or phones, all the um, technical items that we need to have at our home office in order to be able to connect by way of uh, remote uh, for remote interpretation. So my recommendation is that if you're it's time for you to get a new computer or a new phone. Consider the fact that in the future you would be doing a lot more remote interpretation by way of phone or video than before. So get something that is going to well equip you for that purpose. Um, and then the technology part, which um, believe it or not, it's a challenge for everyone. But if it's anybody is out there over the age of 30, the technology is a big challenge. The, the pace it goes forward is very difficult to keep up with. However, um, I think we all have to think that this is something that is there and we have to catch up with it. So baby steps are good and uh, not shying away from um, requests that requires remote interpretation in a, is another very good way of being familiar with the technology. 
getting familiar with the terminology that goes with it is also very important. Sometimes you, words are used that's, that are very, very foreign to us. And it's good to understand, take the initial steps and make sure that you face it and you understand it and you ask and get yourself familiar with the technology. Clearly, nobody can move as fast as the technology is going forward. But if we step back, it's just going to hold us back. So let's just move forward as even if a little bit is better than nothing. So don't be shy to ask. And I can share something with you that sometimes my eight-year-old granddaughter can help me out with some of the glitches that I face with. Even today, um, because I just had a, a new grandchild that I'm, still, that I'm going to stay at my daughter's home, and um, um, she had to set me up. So don't be shy to ask. It's a challenge for everyone, and um, you're not alone out there. So let's. So now that we are... Um, for the future interpretation, the remote um, interpretation, and we have our equipment and everything set up. Let's see um, what happens when we want to accept assignments that are remote assignments. In fact, I just had a couple today uh, for remote interpretation for court. So it's right there and we got to be ready for it. So some of the challenges that interpreters will be facing, I don't really need to go into a lot of detail to you. You've done it before, you've done interpretation on the phone, and you know that obviously you can't see the person, you can't see the body language, the facial expressions, the tone of voice something clear, and the hearing is not as good as if you were in a face-to-face -face session. Obviously. Uh, if you're like me, a lot of us just prefer the face-to-face, -face, but we are on the phone. So make sure that you can hear well. If you cannot hear yourself well, and um, hearing problem doesn't necessarily mean that you are too old. That means that a lot of people may have, even at a younger age, have hearing problems. So make sure that your hearing is good. Make sure their phone lines are good and uh, make sure there are no background noise. If, and I've said here that, uh, try to Steve. What I mean is that if you cannot hear well, let them know right away. If there is any ambiguities into what is going on, let the other side know. Don't be shy. Don't think that oh, I have a phone and I just have to do whatever I can. No, you can be assertive. You can ask for clarity. I was interpreting for an immigration and, uh, from the airport once, and there was, there must have been somebody right next door to the officer who was interviewing the person for whom I was interpreting. And it was a totally different language, and the background noise was just driving me crazy. So really speak up, and, and I had to really say, you know what, I cannot hear you well the background noise is really disturbing for me. We have to do something about it in order to provide my service at good um, accuracy and professional level. So be assertive in, in these circumstances. And uh, another very important point that I would like you to pay attention to is the multitasking. Sometimes if you're doing uh, interpretation remotely, Let's say if you're working with nurses, the, perhaps the first 20 questions that a nurse would ask, you would probably know them like the back of your hand. You know exactly what they are. And the temptation of doing multitasking is very great. So if you're at home and you know that you've done this 100 times over and over again and you know what questions there are, don't think that, okay, I can walk the dog at the same time or I can start preparing dinner for at this time. That would be a grave mistake. Multitasking is totally, totally unprofessional. Please avoid the temptation and make sure that you let the member of your families that you are working. You take a small corner or an office if you have one at your home and uh, in a quiet um, environment and provide your services at a professional level. This is highly important that you keep that in and uh, make sure that um, 
the service you provide has the best quality and the professional level that is expected of you. And once you've done that, um, my recommendation is that plan ahead of time, which is the same thing whether you're doing face-to-face -face or remote. However, what is um, uh, different here is that you're now going in face which you may have worked before remotely, but it's a lot more so now. So you, your clients would be either direct clients, agencies, or a larger organization, such as, for instance, I myself work for Ministry of Attorney General. I would just sit down and think of what would be a feasible um, terms and conditions that I can work with each category of my client. Obviously, if you're looking for a direct client, you're totally in charge. You can uh, let the client know what your terms or conditions are. But if you're working with an agency, you sort of have some control, but not only control. And um, because the agencies have got their own terms and conditions, and you somehow have to come to a point where you meet each other, and it's feasible both for you and the agencies. And when you come to a larger organization, such as Ministry of Attorney General, or Immigration Refugee Board, or some of the medical organizations that are um, very large, you have almost zero control uh, and room for putting in your own terms and conditions because their, their organization is too uh, large and well established. So you will have to accept their terms. So consider of that. I think what would be feasible for you dealing with each separate category of your clients? Put them down, write them down, and then when the client asks you what are your terms and conditions, then you'd be able to provide right away and be fully transparent. Some of the points that I'd like to point out for you when you're putting down your terms and uh, thinking out what is feasible for you um, are these. One is your rate, what are you gonna charge direct clients, how are you gonna come into terms with the agencies that you work with, and are the terms and conditions of larger organizations acceptable for you or not? So put these um, uh, in clear understanding between you and your clients. And the other point about the remote uh, interpretation is that, is it a stool session or is it a last minute request? Sometimes if you're working remotely, they call you and they right away the request is there for you to provide your services. So you're gonna to have to think, are they the same rate or not? And the timing is important. Between let's say nine o'clock to five o'clock during the daytime is a normal day um, time work. So you're gonna to have to think that if they call me at two o'clock in the morning when I'm asleep and it's an emergency by the police or the, um, one of the hospitals, am I gonna charge the same rate or is it a different rate? The hours requested, is it a two minutes request or is it half a day or a full day? Your cancellation policies. So all of these are important points that you need to put down on paper, think about it, as to how they're going to work with your different category of clients, have them clear, ready, communicated beforehand, make sure it's full understanding on both sides, and then accept. I, I urge you to make sure that everything is totally clear before you accept, because I don't want any of my colleagues to think that, you know what, I provided this interpretation, it took me two hours and the, the money was not worth it. And I've heard it often enough. So please make sure that you go through these steps to make sure that you are clear. Now, where do I find some work? And, and now this is just recommendations. And I think um, uh, Isabel went through really great points about the resume, the social media, how to market yourself. So it's bring your resume up to date some of us have been waiting for some certificate or language testing forever never had time good time to do it right away 
stay with touch with your colleagues. I think that's very important and I've always recommended it and I recommend it over and over again. Your colleagues are your support, they're not your competitors. Stay in touch, make sure that you um, exchange ideas, very important. Look for reputable local agencies first and I've given you a couple of examples that where uh, they offer remote interpretation. For instance, I know that multi-languages, they are um, offering through Kudo a great program. And so there's, I have just put their number there. And there is another space in Toronto, which is a phone line. Again, I have basically researched it on the internet and I'm providing their information to you. And there are other international agencies with remote. You don't really work with one local agency at all. You can just go worldwide. And I have looked on the internet, looked up some names, and these are just examples of what you can do to expand your uh, range of work um, agencies uh, or the clients that you work with. By no way I can. Um, uh, vouch for anyone, um, and I've said in um, in my um, um, presentation here. Please be vigilant when you're working with new agencies, in particular. And this above list is just a, uh, examples of some of the agencies that are out there that you can work with. And um, I cannot provide any assurance, uh, but uh, when you work with them, please make sure that you. Uh, exchange communications and you are clear. And my recommendation is that if you're working with a new agency, don't work a lot uh, all of a sudden and uh, uh, just make sure that you work a little bit at a time, make sure that there are integrity in place, there are professionals, and then once you feel a lot more comfortable with them and you are sure that uh, they can be trusted, then that's a good time to expand your range of work with them. Now, uh, self-preservation um, self is a very important during these times. I'm not going to go through a lot of points uh, in this area. I think you are um, well aware you have to keep your spirit up during these times. The eating healthy, I think it's good to eat less during these times. I think you're all concerned that if you're at home all the time, we eat a lot more. So let's try, try not to do that. My recommendation is that. Hoarding, I would definitely go against it. It's not a good idea. It creates um, unreal um, panic in wherever you live. Exercise is very good. You can find all sorts of exercise on the YouTube and internet, yoga, step, Zumba. I love it because of the music. Um, you can take walks um, uh, and um, take a bath of fresh air. Um, there are all sorts of different apps like the FaceTime house party, WhatsApp and all that. You can see your family and friends and get in touch with them. Lots of home projects that have been sitting there waiting forever. They can be done during the times. I try to do my taxes and get them all ready uh, so that um, they're there uh, once uh, uh, they need to be sent in, which I think is any time now. So that's a good time. Um, one very important point I'd like to bring to your attention is that don't forget the children in the family. I, I have two children, daughters and I had just had my fifth grandchild on Friday. They are very sensitive and I think us as adults it's important for us to show them resilience and tolerance and sustainability during a lifetime. They can they have very strong feeling and they can feel it. They can see things in your eyes and in your movement, in your talking to other adults. This is the time that we need to show them that life changes and we need to be ready for these changes and we have to show our children that um, um, <clears throat> we need the strength and the sustainability in order to make sure that we can go through life um, and be strong. And um, 
uh, I may have been running uh, uh, out of time, but I'm just going to quickly go through yeah, the advantages. And, yeah, of so, yeah, and so Hela, like if we can start wrapping up because we have Evandro has his 15 minutes and we will have to wrap okay. up. At three. Well, so I'm just saying that there are some advantages. Uh, it's on my screen. It's um, comfort of your home, no driving, no risk of accident, no rush hour delays, and a lot more work we can take on. It's on my screen, and I don't want to rush into uh, Alejandro's uh, time. Thank you very much. No, 